So to bring this to life, I happen to be in the boardroom uh, of a public company of mine, Demandware. And so I'm going to tell you right now, because it's public, we can't disclose all of this information on the site. Uh, and we had a real live case study. Sure enough, uh, we were at the Demandware board meeting, and we were talking about a company that's now you know, an eight-year overnight success, having gone public this year, could evolve its, its brand. What could we do to move the needle now that we've become a substantive company uh, with market leadership position to really accelerate the next stage of our brand? So with that, I'd like to introduce Jameis to uh, bring it to life and tell us how did he do it. Thank you, Michael. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? It's a chronic fear as a marketer that you're not heard, so it's the kind of thing that I like to check whenever I start talking. Um, so thank you for the intro. Uh, I'm here to talk about a, a living case study. So this is ongoing right now. And um, what I want to do is take you through some of the rationale that we had about our branding and take you through some of the you know, analysis that we did and then ultimately show you a couple of instances about how we're starting to execute it. Um, and the execution is not yet live, so you guys are going to get a sneak peek at a lot of this. Bounce this along one more. Good. So, um, as Michael said earlier, er early stage when you're a smaller organization, it's very easy to sort of deal with branding, particularly when you're in a marketing organization of just a couple of people, because you are the brand and you can make these brand choices along the way. Um, and you just sort of know instinctively whether something's what you want to represent or not. But as you grow as an organization, and as in, in our case, we've got a much larger platform now with a much larger microphone, it was time for us to look back and really. Uh, institutionalize the brand. You know, what are the brand attributes of us that we wanted to build equity around as we execute in lots of different markets? And so what we did is we looked back at um, and did an analysis with our customers and the broader market to get a sense for what are the attributes that we're known for and also what are the challenges that we have in the marketplace and what are the things that we're trying to get done. And I'd summarize it simply by saying that we're here to try and change the criteria in the buying cycle. So Demandware, in this case, as an e-commerce platform company, was selling into a market where there was already a sort of a software space. But we were doing this in a very different way, which was to deliver this as an on-demand service. So our goal in our marketing and in our branding is to help the market change its mind and change its perspective about how it evaluates us and thinks about us. So this is overall for us about how do we build on what we've done and change the, change the criteria. You know, for us, it was about, and I'm not going to go through each one of these things, but a sense of both moving from how we had marketed in the past and also how buyers thought about it to this new set of things that we wanted them to consider, you know, from cost to advantage, uh, from managing software to growing the business, um, from our mid-sized companies to really the sense of high growth brands. And so our challenge was how do we then sort of move from the left-hand side all the way over to the right and get people to think about things differently. When we did an analysis of the market, what we saw uh, was that everybody, for the most part, was playing in the blue boxes, um, where everyone was talking about either e-commerce or technology and talking about it as either features or benefits. And occasionally, we'd see people that would move into the upper right and the upper, uh, the lower right and the upper left. But what there is was this great opportunity in the green squares, where there was this intersection of what are the rewards that individual buyers want? You know, what are their aspirations? What are their goals? And how do those align with the big objectives of these large retail organizations, which is really around the brand and their marketing? So what's that intersection between the reward for the individual and the broader objectives of the business? And that's where we saw and think there's a, a, a tremendous opportunity to brand the company differently. So I'll explain that a little bit more. What this meant for us was we needed to move around and move beyond some of the broad claims that we were making in the marketplace and really substantiate them. Not just move on the claims of our software, but also talk about what it was going to do for individuals personally. We think one of the great opportunities in enterprise software now is to start talking about the emotional side of software. Right? What does software allow someone to do to fulfill their own dreams, their own ambitions, their own goals? Uh, we think about this in consumer technology all the time. Apple, of course, is the case study for this where we use iPhones because they're cool. Well, couldn't enterprise software be cool? You know, we're spending a lot of time as buyers here, and this is we're making strategic bets here. Couldn't we make enterprise software something that individual buyers would aspire to and want? And the ultimate success of that would be if they were in the cocktail party or talking to their peers and they were saying, you know, I'm using demandware, right? And that was that sign of sort of personal expression. So to get to that level of sort of emotional connection to buyers, 
we wanted to position the company around a lot of their ambitions and goals and dreams to sort of get to that word of mouth and sense of pride uh, that people have when they're really connected to a product. So one of the things that we looked at was when it comes to positioning branding, it's not just about you know, how the customer feels about you, but how does the product or how does the brand make them feel about themselves? And so in the case you see here, here's a, you know, a kitten looking in a mirror and seeing a lion. We want the buyers to sort of have that sense of you know, what they think about themselves is reflected back uh, based on the selections that they make. Right? So that's what we're trying to get to. And Michael talked earlier about the actors. We look at it as sort of somewhat um, who are the actors that we see in the buying cycle from the head of e-commerce to the CEO or CMO to IT or finance. Um, you know, and what are their sort of rational reasons for buying? Um, you know, there's a long-standing axiom in, in marketing, which is people buy on emotion but justify with fact. So these are generally the facts that people think about when they justify a purchase. Um, whether it's uh, finance wants better economics or the CEO is talking about the growth of the business. But what they're really thinking about are sort of the emotional quotient behind that. Right? What are the things that they really sort of want to feel about themselves? Whether it's IT wants to feel like they have a much stronger seat at the table or the e-commerce person wants to build their career to be able to move up to the CEO level or CEO really wants to be you know, thought of as a leader to watch. Our goal in the branding is to sort of attach ourselves to those aspirations that they have so that when they think about their career growth, they attach that to our brand. Okay. So our brand promise, the, you know, the pillar on which we're really building, comes down to this concept of potential, right? That we as a, a company and a, a provider are, are the means that they're going to use to achieve whatever their dreams are, right? Their potential as individuals, their potential as brand. We want them to think about us as the canvas on which they're going to write that or paint that masterpiece. So that's largely what's behind our brand strategy is to attach ourselves to their dreams. So the customer benefits from this in a couple different ways. You know, when e-commerce traditionally has been you know, thought of with very big software infrastructure and laborious processes, what we're coming to is a sense of, look, if you, if you can think it, you can do it. If you have an idea, you can put it into action. Right? No matter, there's no limits, there's no worries, there's no, no, no surprises. There's a sense of, if you have a dream, you can do it. And the sense that freedom and give people, the, give the buyers the sense that, Geez, this is, this is the right thing for me to invoke all my great dreams. I just need the right tools for that. So our promise um, rests on really four basic pillars, and I'm not gonna walk through each one in detail, but the sense of innovation, we can help them uh, innovate faster and better. Simplicity, it's not hard, it's easy. Partnership, we're in it with them for the long haul. And performance, and that we're here to support their ongoing success. So underneath each of that, of that major promise is this four, our four major pillars, if, if, if you will, that we continue to pivot to and articulate to let them know that this is what underpins what we do and why we make the claims we do. So I'm gonna skip a little bit into some of the sort of advertising and give you a sneak peek on how this brand is starting, is starting to roll out. If you go to our website now, you'll see it's very black, right? But, so now you're gonna see a couple of different colors. And I'm gonna explain in concept a couple of things that we're doing here to sort of bring that brand to life. First you'll notice is the colors, green and gray. Green as innovation, growth. Gray as steel, strength. Um, you'll notice that the customer's brand imagery is portrayed heavily. It's not about us, it's about the customer's brand. So you'll see that everywhere in all of our, our ads and our, our marketing is, it's not about us, it's about them. And in the language here we have is, well, you'll see a pattern coming up, which is the customer always comes first. Their brand and their comparative verbs, which is whatever they view as Im important to them, those are the verbs we use. Comparatively, we do it better. We help them do it better. With is a statement of partnership, and we come last, right, as the partner. So this is a repetitive formula that we use in all of our, our marketing to sort of help convince and show the brand that it's about them, it's about their brand, it's about their goals, and we're here as an enabling partner. We're here to help them amplify whatever it is that they want. 
in a new website that you'll see soon, this is starting to roll out even more. So the statement you'll see on the, on the homepage is, great brands have great ideas. We help make them possible. Right? So it's that sense of complimenting the user, complimenting the viewer, complimenting them on the strength of their brand and what their ambition is, and just to let them know that if they want that, we're the partner for them. And more examples of that that I showed earlier, um, you know, Perry Ellis or Land Zen, these are all the comparatives that we're starting to roll out. Now what we think is a position of strength for us is these brands are willing to let us use their brand, which is pretty rare in software. So instead of us talking about our features and our functions, we're here to show who are the partners that we work with and how they're willing to let us use their brand, which is a tremendous statement of, of partnership, and that rings loudly in the marketplace. So in summary, what, what I'd say is when you think about branding, um, a lot of times we often, as marketers, stop at features and benefits, and we think that's where it, it goes. Um, the ultimate measure of this is when you get to the reward, right? What is the emotional quotient that a buyer looks at? Um, because that's the thing that really people sort of resonate with and it creates this sort of emotional connection. People always justify with fact, but when you sort of strike the emotional chord, it, it's a tremendous advantage and that's really where the power and strength of brand comes from.